tune in for Patrick Ching's Painting in Paradise. Aloha, I'm Patrick Ching and thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. In this episode, we learn to draw and paint a hibiscus. Do you know that Hawaii's state flower is the native yellow hibiscus known as Ma'o Hauhele? We'll visit with Rick Barboza of Huiku Maoli Ola, a native Hawaiian plant nursery that grows several rare varieties. I'll show you how to draw a hibiscus and then how to paint one. All this and more on a flowery episode of Painting in Paradise! <laughs> there are so many beautiful kinds of hibiscus to be found in Hawaii. Many were propagated in other parts of the world and introduced to Hawaii for landscaping or as ornamentals. We can walk Though most of the hibiscus used in landscaping originated in other places, there are some amazing native hibiscus. At the base of the Ko'olau Mountains on the windward side of Oahu is Huiku Maoli Ola a native Hawaiian plant nursery with an important mission. You know, myself and my business partner, uh, Matt Sherman, we started Huiku Mauliola back in 99. And the primary focus behind our company that we wanted to share with everyone is to promote uh, both ecological and cultural um, importance of native Hawaiian plants. But we also offer the services of uh, landscaping. So what we try to do within our landscapes is we treat each property like a mini restoration project. So we'll actually try to put back the plants that would have been growing at your house, you know, before the land was used for development. Most times people refer to uh, native hibiscus as kokio, and depending on the color, then you, you know, will determine if it's uh, kokio ula, if it's red, or kokio keo keo, if it's white. Um, another name for hibiscus is alo alo, or pua alo alo, or pua ku alo alo. A lot of people may know that our state flower is a hibiscus, but specifically it's our yellow hibiscus called Ma'o Hauhele. Uh, the botanical name is Hibiscus Breckenridgii, and that's the only hibiscus that can be considered our, our state flower. Unfortunately, it is an endangered species, but what's cool about it is that, you know, our ancestors recognized that uh, the plant had certain characteristics, which they then incorporated to its name, Ma'o Hauhele. Uh, so Ma'o, it also shares the name with another hibiscus relative called ma'o, which is our Hawaiian cotton. And uh, even though the yellow, the flower is yellow, uh, you, you make a green dye from the yellow flowers and green in Hawaiian is o ma'o ma'o. And so that's how that plant gets its name. Hele means to move. Our state flower, ma'o hao hele, the tree itself will grow up and then it'll actually get top heavy and fall over. And uh, when it falls over, where it touches the ground, it'll reroot and then it'll kind of start growing over here. So it'll hele from one position where it started to grow and will hele on to the next position. Uh, we actually have a, a purple hibiscus called Akiohala or Hauhele Bai. And what's cool about that one is you, you typically find those ones growing around pond margins or, or, or on the uh, uh, margins of wetlands. Uh, for example, like Kauai Marsh. So this is uh, another species of hibiscus that's endemic to Kauai. Uh, you know, Kauai being the oldest island had the most opportunity for plants to develop into a bunch of different species. Only found on Kauai and in particular like the Waimea Canyon where it's a little bit more dry. All of our native white species of hibiscus are fragrant and they're the only naturally fragrant hibiscus species in the world are our two 
native whites. This is Hibiscus arnatianus subspecies Immaculatus. Uh, at our nursery, we call it Koki o Ke o Ke o. Uh, and if you notice that it's got a pure white stamenal column, unlike the other native white hibiscus that, that we were looking at that had like a reddish pink stamen. Uh, this particular subspecies is only found on the island of Molokai. It's a really beautiful specimen. And unfortunately, like a whole bunch of other plants, it's endangered. Over here, we got two different species of native red hibiscus. Uh, this one in particular is uh, hibiscus clayi, so only found on the island of Kauai. Uh, this one is extra special to us because it actually uh, is a plant that once belonged to uh, the late Betsy Gagne, and uh, she was a real inspiration to a whole bunch of people in the conservation industry. So. Um, you know, we were very fortunate to, to get a plant that once belonged to her. You can notice they're a lot smaller than your typical hibiscus rosa sinensis, which is what most people in Hawaii have in their yards. In the painting, Ka'o'o Mauloa, what that translates to is the o'o bird lives on. Uh, in the foreground of the painting, there's a few plants. So one of them is Kokia, and the Hawaiian name is Hauhele Ula. was last observed uh, on O'ahu in 1888 uh, and the last place that it was seen was in Coco Head which is still within the Ahupua'a of Waimanalo. The landscape has changed so much today that we often can't really envision what that landscape would have looked like you know before humans arrived here and so that's kind of what I was hoping that would be transpired onto the canvas and you know Patrick nailed it. So how is the Polynesian introduced plant? Typically the flowers will open up uh, yellow and then throughout the day as it gets older it'll start to turn orangish you know kind of an orangey red color. Milo is also a Polynesian introduction so far that we know of at least. The botanical name is Thespesia papunia. It's also in the hibiscus family and its flowers uh, resemble hibiscus and Hawaiians highly value Milo for its wood. So this right here is a uh, endemic species of hibiscus that's only found on the island of Kauai, in particular the wetter valleys on the northwestern side of the island. You know um, what I call that kind of hibiscus? <laughs> Low biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <bro. laughs> but all joking aside, growing native endangered plants is serious business. You know, we have the privilege of growing these plant species. It's not because we're trying to grow the rarest plants, it's that's pretty much all we're you know, left with. With plants that are on the endangered species list, um, you know, all of them are registered with the state and they come with a little uh, identification number. Here within our nursery, there's a lot of steps that we have to take to make sure that we preserve what's left of the natural population remaining in the wild. We started in 99, so uh, I can't think of a better way to spend my days than doing this kind, so yeah, I'm still. Mahalo for visiting Hui Ku Maoli Ola. Let us help you transform your land back to Aina. Hui Ku Maoli Ola! When we return, I'll show you how to draw a hibiscus. Okay, gang. I'm going to show you now how I go about drawing a hibiscus. A hibiscus is a beautiful flower. It has like five big petals and I'm going to use this pen. You can use a pencil, but if you use a pencil, remember to press softly. softly. Why are we going to press softly? So that if we need to, we can erase or ignore some lines, okay? Like I'm going to want my hibiscus to be around this big and I'm going to make the pico or the center of it right around there. And then I'm going to make five circles representing the five petals, okay? Here. Now the next thing I'm going to do is put the stamen. You know that long thing that sticks out of the hibiscus? I'll put the stamen right around here. And it's sticking up. And it comes down like that. Now at the top of the stamen, they got these little pollen balls. Uh, I don't know what they're called. I'll call them pollen balls. 
and they come out on little sprigs like that and then they got like little balls on the end and they're usually full of colorful pollen like you know yellow or whatever and then on the top you got these five little circle things again and they got a name yeah i don't know it i'm supposed to but they got a name i'll pop it up on the screen and they go like two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to give some leaves to this flower. And they can be coming out here. Kind of like that. You know, I'll put one down there. And I'll put one over here. And real quickly, I just formed up my hibiscus. Okay, now that I've got my hibiscus formed up, I'm going to take a bigger pen and kind of give it some details. And I tell you what, this time... I'll start with the stamen here. A line that goes down there. It's kind of thin, a little bigger on the bottom. And remember those sprigs. And little pollen balls. If I find out the real names of these things, I'm going to put them on the screen. And on the very top of the stamen, there's these five little circles again that have a name. Here's something I'm going to do between the petals, where the petals kind of meet. I'm going to put little dark pukas, holes. Yeah. And so you got like one there. You know, one's behind the stamen, another one there. So we can see four of them. And you can go ahead and fill those in with color, make them dark. Now when I do the petals, I'm going to have one petal overlapping each other. There's always one side of the petal that's on top and one side of the petal that's on the bottom. I'll start with this one right here. That one's going to be in front, waving a little bit, stopping here. And make the next one overlap it, okay? So the next one's going to be overlapping it, give it a little wavy. Stop right there. Got to stop before the next petal overlaps it. Come in again, this one overlaps. And coming down, let that stamen come right out of the join over there. That's kind of a nice design, I think. Okay, going for the next pedal. And stopping it right. Starting here at that puka, overlapping. That line passes in front of the other line, giving some wavy JVs and stop it right there. Now in the center part, remember it's kind of dark in the center, yeah? We'll give it some kind of zoom, zoom, zoom lines like that. And you can imagine coloring this, yeah? And when you color it, make this inside part darker red or whatever color you want. You know your hibiscus, you can almost make them almost any color. Now on top of the petals, we can give them a little more shape by just sending some lines out like that. Okay, just have some fun with this. You can also put some little lines, you know, towards the end like that if you want now the next thing I'm gonna do is shape the leaves and on most hibiscus your leaves can be like serrated like jaga jaga you know here we go okay so I'll go and make them a little serrated little jaga jaga zigzag and I'll tell you another fun thing you can do with your leaves here you can make them kind of straight here and have part of the leaf flipped over like that yeah isn't that cool all right there's the center midrib it doesn't go past because this part is like flipped up now speaking of the center you can go send some i guess you call them veins out yeah and they kind of will show the contour of the leaves and this one would come out from the bottom. And then give it a stem or two. And there you have it, a drawing of a hibiscus. When we return, I'll show you how to paint a hibiscus.
Hello everybody and thank you for joining me. Today we're going to be painting a red hibiscus. Now notice my color palette. Um, I've got all kinds of colors around here. Anything I think I might use, I put them at the edge of my palette and then I'll work my way towards me, okay? My first goal is to do an underpainting that gives me a preview of my final painting. Okay, so the first thing I am going to do is make sure that every speck of white is covered with paint in my underpainting. I'm going to put down just a layer of red. Okay, and now I'll pay attention to these edges. Just going to go right around them, get the outline that I want, and get rid of all those white lines. At this point, I might want to give a little bit of a dark area, a little bit of a dark spot right in my pico area. Okay, the pico is the belly button, little center. We want to make it look deep. After the first layer is done, I'll paint everything again, starting from the back. I'll start with the lightest colors. If I want to have any white or blue, I'll do that first, then some dark green. Then I'll finish up with my leaves before I start on my flower. <laughs> You want to put more of the light areas than you're going to end up with because those dark areas, they're going to overpower the light, okay? And now I am giving another layer. So I'll go ahead and paint these leaves again. Because my background is still wet, so I can have these wet blended lines between my leaves and my background. Because I'm going to save my sharp lines for that flower where I want people to look at first. Now I'm going to put another layer of red on top of my hibiscus and you'll notice its second layer how nice and bright it is. Uh, you can put crimson here, whatever kind of color combinations you want to make a nice deep red for that belly button area, okay? And I'll get that and just basically paint a dark area here. I might take this opportunity right now to show the viewers, you know, what Petal goes in front of what? Okay. Before you can show the viewer what petal is in front of what, you gotta know and decide in your mind which petal is in front of the next one. They all overlap one and they're all covered by one. Okay. Now with this dark color too, you can start to uh, create some shadows and some lines in here, some shadows. I'm gonna now place five little dimples. This is gonna be almost a black color when I add a lot of ultramarine blue to this red, they're gonna be right between the flower petals, okay? So there could be one there, and one there. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is start to uh, put some reflections on our flower. I'm gonna get a little bit of a magenta color. You know, at this stage too, I'm gonna start using some orange in here too. Yep. No, you're not going to use orange. I'm going to use orange. Yeah. Let's see if I like it. Yeah, I think it looks nice. I know what you're thinking right around now. If you folks are doing this and yours is coming out so good, you're like, I am an artist. Yeah, because you am. There's one thing I never learned is when to leave it alone. Yeah, we all never learn that. Oh, step away from the painting. But I'm playing around, seeing if I can get it 1% better. But you might make it 20% worse. But that's a risk I have to take because I'm an artist. Okay, go for it. Ah. Tell you what, before I do my statement, I'm going to put its shadow in there. I'm going to take some dark color, just my ultramarine blue and red. And I'm going to put a stamen shadow right there. Oh, I'm just going to guess that it might look good coming right there. All right, so now I'm going to lay in my stamen and do a little touch-up highlights glazing, and we'll have a painting. Now, the stamens also have five little balls up there, little red balls of whatever they are. You can get the full hibiscus painting lesson and other online painting lessons at patrickching.com. Alright, so here's my hibiscus I painted. 
Remember we did the underpainting, then the background nice and blurry. Even the leaves we kind of made a little blurry. Dried everything, painted our hibiscus a second coat of red and painted into that the dark pico or the belly button area. Five petals, dark divots, a stamen, pollen, those five little red balls, and you have a hibiscus. Huh. Put it down here and it's a low hibiscus. Anyway, <laughs> that's it. I'm running out of jokes. Aloha. Thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. I hope you enjoyed learning how to draw and paint the hibiscus. I love to see what you did, so why don't you send a picture of you and your art to aloha at patrickching.com. <laughs> Bye-bye. Um, what I call that kind of hibiscus. <laughs> Low biscuits. <laughs> oh, bruh. <laughs> 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 That's a good one.